Do, 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 do. Whoops, I got it wrong. There it is. There it is. Uh, uh. Go, Otis. This is Otis, not Otis Redding. Otis McDonald, my favorite guy. Otis McDonald puts out a lot of great uh, royalty free music that I enjoy on this podcast. One of the main reasons I wanted to do a podcast actually was that I loved royalty free music. You know what else I love? Let me slide my mic a little bit. You know what else I love? Uh, what are they called? Oh, photos. It's like the royalty free version of photos. Um, although maybe you do have to buy them. What are those photos called where they're just really plain and ordinary photos where it's like you can search man eating pizza or woman crying on chair or front porch party. Uh, what are those called? Photos, photos, stock, stock photos, stock photos and generic and I mean royalty free music and yeah generic items I love those too let's just list a whole bunch of things we love um I love just those things that's all I love no I love apples I haven't been eating enough apples lately I love I still love those Lindor chocolates I've decided I like the milk chocolate ones the best I used to hate it but right now I'm drinking some chamomile tea and I love it mm. What else, guys? Um, oh my God, I know. Let, let's get this music. Is the music turned off yet? I think it is. All right, listen up. English muffin pizzas. Get it going. Do it for your family. Do it for yourself and do it for the world. All you do. Now, I've talked about this, but it's been at least three years ago because I get into um, kind of... Uh, God, I don't have any words tonight. I get into time periods of my life where I get really into English muffin pizzas and then I kind of phase out of them a bit, but I'm back in, baby. And okay, so you get English muffins. I really recommend Thomas's Extra Crispy. I think that's the brand I like the most. Let me look that up. Let's look up the internet together. Let's pretend like we're doing a slumber party. All right, Extra Crispy. Thomas's Extra Crispy English Muffins. Yeah, that's it. Wouldn't it be fun to have a slumber party and all we do is look up? No, it's Aura Wheat. Sorry, Aura Wheat, not Thomas's. Why did I think Thomas had an English muffin? Anyway, Aura Wheat Extra Crispy English Muffins or any old English muffin you can get. If you've got like a local brand you like, get that. First of all, English muffins are just beautiful. With just butter, how good is that? With just peanut butter, amazing. Um, English muffin sandwiches are also good. My friend Erica taught me to do that. Just a turkey sandwich with avocado, onion, spread some Dijon on there, call it a lunch, right? Uh, but anyway, pizza sauce, English muffins, that's Frankie trying to get my studio, um, and any topping you want. So tonight I did, with the family here, I did, for me personally, I had capers, um, an Italian blend of cheeses, uh, onion, sliced really thin onion, pepperoni, and jalapeno. Anyway, all you do is you put, you don't even have to toast them first. You put on just a little, you don't want too much sauce. You put on a little sauce, rub it around on there. And then you put on your cheese and then your toppings, or honestly, you do it in whatever way you want. And you put it in the oven for 400, at 400 for like 10 minutes. And that's it. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I just choked on my chamomile tea. Hold on, let me let me drink a little bit more. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Jeez, sorry. I, it's hard for me to edit things right now. So anyway, we'll just leave the coughs in. That is not a COVID-19 cough. Not that I have any problem with anyone who is coughing because they have COVID-19. I'm just saying I personally don't. And I personally am not going to talk a whole lot about it to, to tonight. I am, I, I don't know. This morning I had like two minor little... Um, panic attacks over all of this. So I'm trying to get it out of my head. I had to nap it off at one point. Another time I had to crochet murder mystery book, read it off. And then I've just been English muffin pizzaing it off. And now I'm going to bath it off, take a bath, and then I'm going to crochet it off. By the way, I think I'm going to reemerge on Instagram tonight just to show you guys that I made Damien a cape, a granny square cape. <laughs> And it's not totally finished, but I took some photos and I'm really pleased with it. So I'm probably going to show you guys that on Instagram stories. 
And I just want to check in and see how everyone's doing. I haven't looked at Instagram in a while, so I'm going to do that. But anyway, I worked for two weeks straight on a cape. For the first two weeks of quarantine here, I made a million granny squares and made a really... I'm very proud of this cape. And capes are cool, in my opinion. I have one cape, a really bright red, weird-ass cape from the 60s that I only sometimes wear it. Most of the time, people kind of look at you like, okay. And then other times, the right people look at you and go... Hell yeah, girl. You know what you're doing. And of course, I prefer those people. But, you know, when I was younger, I would never wear anything that might get that kind of attention. I was too afraid. I basically wore Heather Gray t-shirts and jeans for the majority of my life because of this. Um, and that still is my default, I would say, like black jeans, black t-shirt, Heather Gray t-shirt, black jeans. That's pretty much what I always wear. But um, and I have no problem. I mean, I'm just in my studio. What am I? If I dress to the nines in my studio, what am I, Mondrian? He did that. He looked amazing. If you look at photos of him in his studios, but I'm all about comfort. I'm all about the stretch band sweatpants. I'm all about my new, oh, highly recommend these, Imbodi. I M B O D H I, I believe. These are these jumpsuits for. Um, women or anyone who wants to wear a jumpsuit of this style, actually. Um, they're just very comfortable uh, and they're the softest material. And you guys know, I've talked about how I'm not really a fan of being naked. I'm not like one of those people that prances around the house naked at all. Like it's hard for me to even be naked to get in the shower. To <laughs> I'm a never nude, like on what's his face on Arrested Development. I'm really not a never nude, but I'm pretty close to. I'm just not into it, right? But as I get older, you do realize like, wow, it does feel good to have no nothing uh, constricting on. And so these Embody jumpsuits, they have a whole apparel thing. Check them out. I'll put a link. Let me write this down so I'll remember. Uh, they have changed my life. I feel so unbelievably comfortable. And they're really good. Like you can wear them out once we can all go back to work and do other things. You can like put on a jean jacket on top of them and some boots and go out. Or you can do yoga in them. I think they're originally for yoga people. But they, they show all sorts of people hiking in them. They're just unbelievable. And I will say this. It's not like they're flattering, but they're also not unflattering. For me, uh, as like a kind of curvier person, they, they really do, I don't know, they, they fall exactly where they should fall. I really like them. So that's what I've been wearing. I was going to talk about all the things that I like. English muffin pizzas. Tell me, guys, hit me back. What would you put on your English muffin pizza? Would it be broccoli? Would it be Canadian bacon? Would you make a chicken and barbecue pizza? Another pizza I made recently was um, it's an old Rachel Ray recipe that I learned in 2003, I believe. And it is called, I don't remember, Peking chicken pizza. You mix plum sauce with a little barbecue sauce, and that's your sauce. And you put chicken on it, whatever, or, or tofu, whatever you want, or, or, or leave it out. I don't care. And you've got regular old um, Colby Jack cheese is your cheese and sliced green onions, one of my favorite things. And I believe that's it. Oh, and on the crust edges, you put a little sesame seeds so they get toasted up in the oven. I guess I've been eating a whole lot of pizza lately. Uh, what have you guys been eating? What's been your favorite thing to eat during quarantine? What's been your favorite thing to watch during quarantine? I believe I asked that last time. I didn't answer the hug thing. I miss hugging my mom. I always like hugging my mom. She's one of the few skinny people I like hugging. Skinny people, I don't know. They just don't hug as well, do they? They can, but how good does it feel to hug somebody with like mm, a lot of stuff going on? You know what I mean? I'm not talking about breasts. Necessarily. I mean, that that's good too, but I'm just talking about weightier people are great to hug, aren't they? Uh, give me a second here. Let me find something for you guys. Okay. I was just looking for my stack of books here. I finished my chamomile tea. What else is going on here? You know, as I told you guys the other day, I was back to feeling good in my studio. And then I re retreated a bit from the studio yesterday to do various other things. And now it's late night. It's already 9 p.m. Or so that's not late, but it, it feels late to get into the studio. But I think it's just I am really feeling it right now. 
Uh, if any of you guys know my work, hi to anybody new. I'm actually an artist. I know nothing about podcasting or um, microphones or recording or anything. I just do this for fun from my studio because I like to read things to people. But really what I do is I make drawings. And a lot of my drawings, if any of you guys went to my show in Fort Worth, you may remember the last room is a room full of drawings of all of these men's heads just sort of hiding and peeking out from behind cliffs and all cliffs and rock formations in one and then all water in the other one. And there were a couple smaller ones. And so I'm about to start working on another, like a lot of large versions of that, but it's the same figures kind of hiding behind trees and other sort of formations. And it really, really is reminiscent of the way we're living, like hiding from each other. I find it, I mean, as much as I realize why we're doing this and staying away, it is so unbelievably creepy to me. Like to see that the majority of the time I see other people is just like maybe their heads walking by, like you just see someone's head of your, your neighbor, you know, going by a window or, or like closing their window. Hold on. Frankie's trying to get in and she's driving me crazy. So anyway, you're just seeing hints of people. And even if you have gone to the store during this, how people look at you like you're disgusting and stuff, when I realize what's really going on, but still it feels very offensive, you know? I, I'm doing my best with all my body language and from afar to smile or how do you smile, you know, do some smiles like Tyra Banks taught us all. You smile with your eyes if you've got a damn mask on. And you just do your best to exude some sort of kindness and loving attitude while you're like shielding yourself from everything. If you hear something in the background, it's Frankie just desperately trying to get in. And I can't let her in because I've got very, very expensive pieces of paper laying on the floor that she would love to ruin. Um, but anyway, what I'm saying is we don't have to act like freaks to each other. Like if you see another person, don't act like they're the most terrifying monster on earth. Oh, this is all driving me crazy. If I'm all over the place, it's because I keep having to hit pause to chase my cat away. And I'm so very sorry. It's a very disjointed pod podcast and a podcast. Pads. You know what a lot of these masks look like, especially the ones that aren't cloth and made by hand? They look like menstrual pads. Let me just grab this book. There we go. That's my new uh, fun audio clip that I got from a Lifetime movie. That movie, I believe, was called The Perfect Soulmate. It was about an online poet's biggest fan. And she's a crazy young person who's killed both of her abusive parents. And the poet who has a blog is also abused by her husband. And the fan kills the husband. And then she tries to kill everyone. I loved it. Anyway, there was some like book club and this girl goes, let me just grab this book and I recorded it. And that's my little indicator that I got a book in my hand that I'm going to read to you guys. All right. Got this at Half Price Books in Bellevue before the world ended. This is called First Awakenings, the Early Poems of Laura Writing Jackson. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm just going to jump right in. The only thing I know about Laura Writing Jackson is she lived to be 100 years old. No, maybe 90 years old, something old, something nice and old. <laughs> and that impressed me a lot. She also, oh, this is from Persea Books or Percy Books. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to where you can get this book in the description. Although this is an old one, so you'll have to find it. It's from 92. And it's the, yeah, I mean, it's a really interesting story. What little I know about her. She was born in the States, moved to England. She gave up poetry altogether, but had written tons of poetry before she was 40. Kind of left them all back in some box in Greenwich Village and someone later found them while she was still alive. And then they published them. What else do I know about her? She wrote a dictionary of some sort with her husband. If anyone knows more about her, feel free to let me know. I'm very intrigued. And this is the poem that I had highlighted for, again, that just seems perfect for right now, if you're ready. Earth, Great Eyeball, that's the title. Earth, Great Eyeball, hear me, of the parasites that crawl speckling on you. Do you see the same sun as blinds me? Or is my blackest most your blackest and my loveliest light your meanest? Yet, mirror deep in you, I am not beheld on a horizon. 
though a speck swelled to be a man in your vision, with multiple eye of my own? This is sight, then, a distance in the pain, how the mind removes its own profane by a retirement, enriched in every scourge, dappling, naked sense. Light can emerge where it cannot come in. Darkness can be the light by which we see. Earth has us in her eye astray, like love thinks very far away and loses us among her skies. Heaven is a pensiveness that flies out of Eden, breaks the marge of space, dreams us large as a man from the mites we were besetting and blinding her. The plague is banished not by plucking out the eye with its infection, but roundabout is best for both. We are sight in the great ball. We are light in our own souls and live, as well as earth, by the grace we give the tyranny of body and breath, whose endurance is an endurance of death. Well, there you go. Death. A plague. What else? Parasites crawling on the earth. Seems pretty perfect. Seems pretty perfect. Should I should I just pick a random poem? Let me go grab another book and um, give you another one. Let me just grab this book. Are we liking the sound clip or do we not like it? All right. Uh, from Richard Brodigan's The Pill versus The Spring Hill Mind Disaster, which I've read the title poem from this book on here before because I love it so much. Let's see if I can find it again. I think it's the last poem in the book. Uh, if I find it... I will read it, but I'm going to read you this one. A Candle Lion Poem. This is inscribed for Michael. Turn a candle inside out, and you've got the smallest portion of a lion standing there at the edge of the shadows. I also like this one. Boo, forever. Spinning like a ghost on the bottom of a top, I'm haunted by all the space that I will live without you. And let me go ahead and find the title poem. I'm going to dedicate this to the late, great Richard Swift because this was his favorite poet. Uh, this is The Pill versus The Spring Hill Mind Disaster. When you take your pill, it's like a mind disaster. I think of all the people lost inside of you. And again, this is uh, Richard Broad again. And this is the original book published in 1968. But I'll put a link so you can find more. He's hard to find. A lot of his work is hard to find. But... It's worth looking for it. That's really all I've got. I'm going to get the hell out of here and let you guys do your thing. I'm going to go take a bath and read about crochet murder mysteries. Um, make the English muffin pizzas. Take photos of them. Do hashtag, hashtag English muffin pizzas. Post it on Instagram. At me. Favorite me. Like me. Love me. Hate me. Get out of here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye.